Welcome back, guys, to the Bear Podcast Show, uh, episode 11, with me, Sean Scullion, the handsome stranger, Owen the Bear, Aiden, the face for radio in the background, and today our guest, Andy Malone. Welcome, Andy. Cheers, boys. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you on, Andy. Andy, the social media king. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Was he he there? Was he not? We're going to get it right into it. But first of all, Andy, welcome to the show. Thank you, lads. Pleasure to be here, boys. Who is Andy Malone? Who is Andy Malone, right? I'm from Newry. Good man. 30, 36 years of age. And I started off my career maybe being a footballer. So I started off playing football and I get a couple of bad injuries and then it led me into um, personal training. So then Professional I st- football? Yeah, but I played for Northern Ireland underage. I was offered a contact with Sunderland across the pond. We were signing parent agreement forms and I get a bad injury. Then I was out of football for three years and I got another shot with Barnett in the second division and I got another injury there as well so I had a lot of adversity when I was younger and then I went off the fucking rails man <laughs> partying for two or three years went mad and um, then I was over in Australia in Bondi Beach and I had a bit of an awakening and I decided that all my adversity was only going to make me stronger and I was going to come back there and then I was going to focus on helping people and that's when I went into the personal training business it was a start I, I knew that was I the best personal trainer in the world maybe not but it was the best at the mindset game. I could change my client's mindset. Was I the best? Had I the mo- most knowledge and training them? No. But everyone in the came to me, I could change their mindset to make sure they didn't forget about me when they left. And I kind of, the journey started from there. And um, then we went into the healthy meal business, as everybody knows, on packs meals. We went into that game maybe about four or five years later. And we just started making meals. And they fucking... Flew, they kicked off. So, are you, are you still in the personal training game? No, no, no. You're looking at yeah. <laughs> the big bear, <laughs> the big bear. Uh, well, the summer cut is coming. The <laughs> summer cut is coming. So, were you PTing out in Australia? No, 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 no. We were doing fucking footing about it. And I think it wasn't even a PT at that time. You were partying? We're partying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was there for 12 months, about nine months partying, three months on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of thing, yeah. But, but where, t- what part? Sorry, I was going to jump in there, but yeah, yeah. what about the injury though? What what was the injury that made the you injury, stop playing the football? I snapped my ankle, I had to get a pin in my ankle, and then I, I got back playing after three years, and then I ended up snapping my quad. It was the same injury Jonathan Woodgate got when he went to Real Madrid. He'd only played one game in three years, so there was a hit rate of maybe one in a billion people got it. It was a freak, freak injury. Jeez. So the, the quad would heal, completely heal. You would go out and play five games, and the fifth game it would just snap again. There was, no, there was no cure for it, even building the quad up of strength. As I said, Jonathan Woodgate had the best of the best for three years around him, and he only played one game for Real Madrid. So, so that was that was the that end That was the end of the fucking football. That was the end of the football career. That was it. And you, all dusted, hey. I don't even think you can go back now. Ah, oh, fuck's him, 36 now, you basically. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. Tell me this year. The FC, what the about FC, <laughs> the, the big bear up front, striker. <laughs> <laughs> and the handsome stranger dance. <laughs> I'm a fucking poacher, yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big deal, big offer, big deal. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, no, right, uh, there's fucking, Jesus Christ, so you were, that must have been, what was that like? You, you often hear about these guys, they've set their dream. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, this is, all of a sudden, this is all you dreamed of, and then it's just... Oh, I was, that's what I'm saying, it depressed me, I went mad, drink, drugs, everything you can think of, I was away out partying for four or five days, causing hassle, and my ones fucking causing hassle everywhere. It was like as if somebody had just took my heart out of my chest and just destroyed me. For about three or four years, a guy could have told you the fucking Liverpool under 10s team, yeah. 11s teams, 12 teams. I used to sit before Sky Sports with Tally Tax and I used to sit and watch every result. I was obsessed, the same way I'm obsessed now with business and motivational talking. Yeah. Every day I'm up, I had to find a new obsession. And one, one stage was drinking drugs. Yeah. You couldn't, you said, well, that's what I do now. I'm, I'm, that's where I was finding my fix. Yeah. Now my fix is getting up and motivating people and helping people. And I was able to spin my adversity, my depression, everything that went wrong. And I was able to put that energy now back into motivational talking and re- trying to run a business, you know. So you found then that, because there's a lot of, you ever see this here? A lot of ones were, if they retire for injury, not through choice, they say it's twice as hard for the athlete to handle it. Because if, if your body lets you down, then, if it, you know, if it was taken out of your hands and you had the career. Yeah, yeah. And that's what happens, and that's why I put such a good mindset now at the minute. Like, I train every day, I get up at three o'clock every day, seven days a week, no days off. Yeah. All these boys say your body needs to recover. 
I had fucking plenty of recovery time when I was injured. So now I take every day as an opportunity to get up. Don't get me wrong, I'm pumping iron every day, no, but it might only be 30 minutes on the spin back. Could be an hour walk along the fucking beach in Warren Point, but I'm training every day because I appreciate being able to do that now. So many people can't. Maybe they've lost their legs in a fucking accident, whatever's happened to them. So I appreciate being able to get up and train now because a long time I couldn't do it. Yeah. But, but actually happened was I went against everybody, the physios and all that told me that I wasn't able to do any training, any weights, nothing. This is what, And back then, and I actually went to a horse doctor, and he said to me, they're wrong. Get on to the weights. Start training. Start working your upper body. And he started doing that, and then that's when I kind of got the love for personal training. And uh, the, the physios were giving me the wrong information. They were saying, you can't be lifting any weights. You can't be doing this. You can't be doing that. And that's what kind of inspired me on then to go into the personal training game. It was some, some way of me keeping the mindset good, keeping myself right and still being able to help people because I didn't know what my gift was. I know what my gift is now is my vice, being able to inspire people to motivate them. But back then I didn't know what it was and then I very quickly found out in the personal training, as I said, I probably wasn't the best personal trainer in the world, but it's the best at the mindset and, and keeping them motivated to stay on track, you know? The one thing I get from you, Andy, is if I asked you, were you the best personal trainer? Number one, number one. Number one, the ego get involved, yeah. Football, I was number one. Number one. Number one, I was like, personal trainer, number one. Number one, number one. Business. Confidence was never lacking. That's for sure, that's one thing. But, you know, look, and then, so you had, you had, look, you had no our choice. You had to look at what other strengths you had and what other exactly. things. So you moved into the PT and you found that relating to people was, was where you were at. You yeah, 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 yeah. The mindset and uh, like, that's, that's like me, that's the way I am, you know, in the gym. I in the PT. I'm just like. The big bear. The big bear. <laughs> <laughs> See, the problem relating is. Relating to the awesome stranger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then you come back. uh Absolutely hung over, burnt out. Uh, what age were you, sorry, at that, this point? I was, when I went to Australia, mm -hmm. I left for Australia at 21. It was at the sort of age where you don't know what the fuck you're going to do, what you want to be. And it was just, I tell you what, it was actually just bought a new cure. And I had it for about fucking eight weeks and I came into my oil and I said, fuck, I need to get out of this country. He says, you only have to buy a fucking new cure there. It's in HP, it's in finance. <laughs> and I says, I'm telling you, I need to get the fuck out of this country. And I ended up just saying, look, I'm leaving the fucking car here and I'm jumping fucking ship. And literally, I would say after that conversation with my dad, four weeks later, I phoned fucking two of the boys and he says, look, boys, I'm jumping ship here and I'm going to Australia. Leaving my job, I'm going, you come with me. And he says, fuck it, we'll go with you. And then we jump ship for a year. Mm -hmm. It was I'd just a quick decision. I, I, was, I was starting to feel the pressure at home. I said, fuck it, I'm gone. I'd say you some crack out there. Oh, fuck some crack out. This was what I would say to anyone, but all joking aside, I didn't travel when I was younger. And then Something you regret? I, and I, I'm a, I don't have massive regrets for that because I, I did go out to Spain for the guts of a year and then I met my wife, or I was my wife at the time, and me and her travelled quite a bit before we got married and settled down and children. Yes. So I don't... I, I always thought the biggest learning, the biggest, you can do whatever you want, but you will find out who you are and you will learn things when you travel. Oh, you will, surely. I came home from fucking traveling, not one pound, didn't have a pound and had no shoes. I came home with a pair of fucking flip flops and I phoned my sister before I came home and I says, don't tell mommy and daddy, but I'm coming home next week. I don't have a fucking bean. I don't have a panty and I have no shoes. I've only a pair of flip flops. Where the fuck am I that partying? I left my shoes in the party house. <laughs> and, I back and it says, I'm not going back to that house to get my fucking shoes. And I ended up coming home and I didn't have a fucking dime, didn't have a panty. And that's when I came back and I says, look, I need to fucking go and I need to do something now. And that's when I went and worked in the gym before I became a personal trainer. Then when I went and worked in that gym, then I realised there was more and I just went out there and by myself and that's how I get into that game, you know. And the, it's it's uh, an industry that me and Sean have discussed. It. Did you change your name to Andy Malone PT when you become a PT? And I need the honest answer. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> it's the law. Andy Malone PT. That's a Snapchat name, too, folks. Anyone wants to add me on it there, Andy Malone PT. Get fucking Adam. <laughs> oh, class. We, we were joking uh, in here one day about that there, but we'll, we'll go into that in a different day. But So you were out on your own, and then what I, I suppose then, you were discussing the meals with your clients and then you see yeah well what we were doing was I was giving them a nutritional plan yeah and I'd actually was talking to them one day and I said what if I could make you this nutritional plan and I said fuck we'd be all on for buying it no problem so I went and approached the chef and he came in and um, worked a business partner at the time he came in done a bit of work with me and we just started making it for my clients in Dundalk 
yeah. and then we started doing it in Uri, and then before you know it, there's fucking people in Balamina contact. They said, "Fucking Balamina, that's fucking a bit, that's a way across the outside mm-hmm. of the country." You know, when you're kind of yeah. you're not thinking, yeah, you never really was at fucking outside in Uri apart from Australia. I didn't really travel about, of you know. And I says, "Fuck, we're getting fucking, we're getting far here." And then, in twelve months, we were in the thirty-two counties of Ireland, where we we're fucking everywhere, and the, the, the meals was a massive, massive success. You know, you didn't have your face in the side of a van by any chance? Handsome stranger, he's just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking his face in the side of the fucking van. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it was a long way yeah. baseball. <laughs> uh, well, and it was the biggest van in the country. <laughs> You're fucking right. <laughs> it was it's a lorry. A big lorry. <laughs> Forty well, fucking yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so right. So yeah. then you stumbled on this, and you're like, right, fuck, there's a move here. I'm, I'm in. And then, t- tell me, the it's uh, it's one thing having the personal training mindset, the, the thing, but the obviously the business mindset, the hunger's there. The hunger's there because, if, as you say, if you're right back with pound and you have any fire in you at all, you're ready to go. It's show time. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you're yeah. they're all time low and it's fucking time. It's time to fucking uh, think we, outside we, the we, box. We, we had a guy on here and he went out to be a massive success out in America and it was like turning a hundred million. But he turned around, and he said something. It's still poignant to me. He says his dad says that if you start with nothing and you end up with nothing, you didn't lose a single thing in you. But if you had a lifetime of memories because you were having it, like yeah, 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 you you, you you've gained, but. It's like the mentality sometimes in this country is if they don't have it, they cannot lose it. So they're not going to chase for it. Yeah. Not so back to front. You know, they're saying, oh, well, I don't have it, so I'll never lose it. So I'm not going fucking try and reach for the stars. Yeah. And they kind of sit back and they watch the fucking world through a mirror. But then, as I say, the man that fucking, that fails 10 times is a lot better than the man that's just watching and never entered the arena. You know, he never went out, he never went out to play. And, you know, you have to fucking take the chances Uh and the opportunities because they're everywhere. Oh, what, we haven't even plugged the meals yet, as in what's the name of the, the meals? We haven't plugged it yet. You don't Go, know ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ampex meals. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you've had, so, there's some clinkers, like I've seen so, some boys writing in shit about me, and there's some of them I go down, right? They're brilliant. They're, 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 they're that original, they make me laugh. They're like, clinkers, yeah. Your man yeah, goes yeah, look yeah, at your yeah. man in a, in a fucking fake, <laughs> I still laugh. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. But, so you get all this here, but. Tell me this, you went in to the meals, you set up on packs, and then you were like, right, I need to get these out here. I needed to make a decision to keep the personal training going on the Ampex meals, but we very quickly realised if I wasn't doing the marketing for it, the people were buying the meals because I was coming on talking. I was able to connect with them through a screen. I was saying, these meals will change our life, they'll change our body, they'll change our mindset. I have a recipe for success that can't be stopped. Watch me every day, and I guarantee you'll change your life. Now, we've done a test one week where they took me off social media or accounting stones. Well, they took me off social media and they says, for the next seven days, Andy, we have to put your value in the company. And we have to see what your value is to this company. So they took me off for a week and we went from £38,000 a week sales to £3,500. Oh, sure. Then we had to make it a quick decision who stayed on the company, who didn't, or what, 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 what way it went. We had to put value to the company. So then I had to make a decision, right, well, if that's my value to the company, I have to make a decision, will I keep doing the PT? Because I couldn't do both. I was born to myself. I was working 120 hours a week. The meals were flying, the PT was going fucking great, but I had to say, where's the longevity and what will make the most money in the long grass? So I decided to close the PT and focus in on, on, on the meal side of the game, you know? Right. Full time, full time. So and I when did after, you go full time at this? I went after the first year. So for the first nine months to a year, I was, dibbling, I was doing the PT and I was trying to grow the meal side of the game, but it was taking me on fucking Snapchat. I was on six, seven hours a day. I was going to maybe sitting in the car and talking for four hours. And I was going, I was just going, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. If I put a fucking story out there, it might have pulled in 10 grand. And it was just, it was even, it was even during COVID there because everyone was sitting in the fucking house, all they were doing was watching. And it was, we were able to do that. And then very quickly, I had to say, right, well, I have to make the decision, is this going to be my full-time job? Which was really, like, I can't cook, I can't even cook beans and fucking toast. Right? So <laughs> we have a main company, and he can't even cook, cook beans toast. and toast. <laughs> can't the toast. But um, that's not my game. My game was the nutrition well, side. Well, to be fair, the meals takes any of that out of it. So anyone else that can't cook, you're, you're saying to them that you're getting your nutrition. Exactly. So my side of the game was the nutrition side of it. I knew what they should be taking for the body, and then I was able to... It changed their mindset to make sure that they stayed on the meals. It's okay putting fucking healthy food into the fridge. So many people do it. In the end of the week, they're fucking it into the bin. I was able to come on and get the followers to listen to me. And not not a form of brainwashing, but you were able to say to them, look, if you fucking do this, if you eat good, you train, you think good fucking thoughts, it's a recipe for success. As I say to people, it's thoughts, feelings, 
behaviours. If you're thinking bad thoughts, you feel bad, you do bad. You think good thoughts, you feel good, you do good. And that's what the, the recipe for success is. People can't understand, I'm feeling like shit today. That's correct. <laughs> I'm feeling like shit today, and that's all the talk about in the phone of I feel terrible today. And before you know it, the whole ripple effect of told 25 people that they're feeling like shit, instead of turning around and going, I'm feeling like shit. I have to be thinking bad thoughts. Maybe sitting thinking about their fucking ex-boyfriend or thinking about the job they get let go from. As soon as that happens, it's about self-awareness. You must think, if I'm feeling bad, what's making me feel bad? And nine times out of ten, no. Ten times out of ten. Ten times out of ten, it's your thought process. And that's what I specialise in now, is the mindset. To be honest, I would say 98% of the time, I feel brilliant. I do, I feel good, don't get me wrong, I could be stressed, but I don't see the stress as being bad. I see it as being good. If I'm not fucking stressed, I think there's something wrong. You need to be in the mix of it, like you need to be pushing the pace, you're going to feel stressed, but I'm feeling good, I'm not feeling bad, and I think so many people don't realise that it's not a fucking 30-day programme. It's a 30-second programme. If you can actually change that process within 30 seconds, you can change from that second on. It doesn't mean 30, 30 days and 30 seconds is absolutely no difference. Yeah. The, the change in that mindset, mm-hmm. you know? Well, just a wee quick side note here. If you were getting a thought that was coming over your mind when people are listening to this and you're getting a thought coming over your mind and you're starting to feel down or... Say, that bear's a bastard. How do you stop correct? Straight away, let it go and re- replace it with a good thought. So a lot of people, a lot of people I would advise them to do is put on their favourite song. Yeah. Or think about a thought about maybe fuckers do I'm a wee child being born. Yeah. And you start thinking of these thoughts, like they think when we Maddy was born or Miley, maybe girls, they go, fucking that you've already changed your frequency. Yeah. You've went from a bad frequency, like a radio station. If you go down to the south of Ireland across the border, it starts crackling. The frequency's changing. You can change your frequency from a negative frequency to a positive frequency in a 30 second time frame. In a two second fucking time frame. That positive thought Defaults and negative, what people do is keep repeating the negative thought. So one negative thought leads to another negative thought. And before you know it, it's just spiraling negativity. But they don't realise the power of the human mind. One positive thought breaks all them negative thoughts. And anyone that knows about the law of attraction or knows about the universe knows that a positive thought is a thousand to two thousand times stronger than a negative thought. And that's a fact. But people keep on playing the negative thoughts over. It's like somebody turning around and going, I'm so depressed after that breakup. I'm... You go and listen to them all, they're listening to his fucking boys on Wesley. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're making them say it's they're actually sitting there going, I don't want to feel depressed, but they're playing fucking love tunes. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's about self awareness. And if you become aware of that, you can change your way of thinking, how you see see the world. As I said, if you change your perspective, you can change everything. Everything. So you're in the AMPX, it's taken off. We got to delve into some of the marketing. Was <laughs> this you? Yeah. Was this thing? Who, who handles because we, right. Was I, it just yourself doing the marketing then or did you Just have me, to, just me. So then you, you took a team on board then? We took a team on board to do a bit of marketing, yeah. We outsourced it at the start. We gave it to a couple of people. That, but it was any of the strategy planning. was my strategy planning and they were trying to put it together. So for Sean here that... Has never been on social media. And for some of the viewers here that won't be aware of Andy, I'm going to take you back to a saga. A saga. I will call it a saga because I was getting WhatsApps and there's yeah. a <laughs> And this was in the middle of COVID because this was in the middle of when we came on to social media and we started pushing into... Because I didn't have social media before I started the business. And then I set up one to start the business and then I realised, just as you say, I have a draw tonight. If I couldn't make that or I was away somewhere, the direct hit... The direct reflection on not being live or not being present or not being... Because this is the way social media works. You're either in their face or you're not even in their mind. So if you want to be there... Whether it's good or bad, you need to to be in their face and you need... But it doesn't matter. And as everyone knows over Christmas, I can get up in their face. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen the big bear everywhere, (laughs) man. Everywhere. I've seen the Christmas dinner and the big bear was there. Do you want to delve into it? No, no, no. We'll we'll circle back around, but (laughs) I'm going to take you in. Andy, absolute masterstroke and I'll give you the kudos on this here because I laughed and I did laugh there was was he wasn't he so what yeah, happened yeah. was <laughs> I can know where this is going I can sense it I can sense it yeah. a big bag yeah. of dough a private jet <laughs> oh, was off to LA for Netflix and I seen the 
Trolls were a thing. <laughs> um, there was people that never rode on before wanted to have a wee say in what was going on, and uh, it was like, who shot JR of the social bad. media world? <laughs> and were you? <laughs> oh, I. Uh, so, LA. So, LA, LA, and that's actually talking about there, but the rise of Andy Malone. So, <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of questions that I thought there was a couple of holes in, in what was saying. I didn't understand why you were taking. Uh, you didn't understand English money yeah. till America. The whole the, the whole cave was right. We had sat and goes. How do you get the trolls to come out? First yeah. and foremost, it was raining outside, so I wore sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. First thing I'm going to say is that fucking dickheads wearing sunglasses and it's raining outside. Is jack. <laughs> I said if I take a fucking bag of sterling fucking dough. On the note, I'm saying I'm going to Netflix, we're going to say silly bastard, it's US dollars. Yeah. So we were smart enough to use the anthrax. I had the fucking three piece suit and all on. If you were going to fly to America, you'd be laughing with the flip flops and the shorts on. <laughs> so I said, we need to make this as much of ego. I'll put ego. holes in it, it for ha- them. To it, it, had to be, it had to be. So it had to be egotistic, and the, the time and everything that was going up ha- had to start off with them coming out. The whole point of this was to show people we wanted the throws to come out of the woodwork. The whole yeah. point of the whole thing, if you watch the documentary, The Rise of Andy Malone, the whole scenario around this was to get trolls to come out so then I could put it back on the trolls to show people the generation we're living in. If the trolls come at you, go at them like a steam tree and back at them. But we done it in a good way, class. We weren't out to hurt nobody's mindset. We weren't out to destroy anybody. You might have heard your boy Baco come on and he started saying stuff like, oh, I'm alone through my life. He's done this. That wasn't the way of it. We retaliated back to these people in good humour, good manner. We didn't ridicule anyone. We didn't put anybody down. <laughs> Some people say we did, but we didn't. We done it, in a, I thought, in a nice professional the, the, manner. The, you know? Look, listen. Some people may have, have, have the trolled and then they pay the consequence. And this is sometimes what happens. And what, so what, the, the, they become what, a victim then. My thing that I want to show to people was, right, to the younger people watching this, right, if they troll upon you and you go back at them, right, not even, like, anyone that I went back at, I never went back, I more or less showed what they said about me. Mm-hmm. And then I spun it. And I said, they're dirty wee trolls. That buys a dick nut. All oh, good humour, you know. Yeah. I'd say, Bico, having a bit of crack, right? I never went back at them. Like people were lying on their bathroom floor. If anyone said, Andy Malone's a fake. He's fucking, I can't play him sooner. I can't play him in music because of Andy Malone. All these people were fucking really worked up because I was sitting with my pair of sunglasses on my bag. I don't want to fucking play him. You know, they were so worked up about it. So I wanted to show the younger generation that when you go back at these people, they are cards. They all shy away. They all shy away. So my thing was, if you're in school, and you're maybe in, in a class of 14 years of age, and the captain of the football team, big lad, he's going at you. You shy away, he's going to keep fucking bullying you, keep going. What if you stand up to him and call him out and say, you're a fucking bully, and you're a troll, what happens? He goes quiet. He doesn't do it again because he feels embarrassed. So my whole key about this whole thing to show people is you can't let the bullies and the trolls win. And that, so, that was it. That was yeah. the whole fucking point of it. So it was all planned out, premeditated. <laughs> all you premeditated. Sh- you sure you didn't just get caught out and now we're fucking... <laughs> <the stuff? laughs> <laughs> well, no, but you know, the only thing about it was, right, if people were, were saying that, the evidence was there. We never left the country. Right. We were in a fucking hotel room with, <laughs> with, with videographers Video one, right? So th- when we jumped off the plane, we went to the hotel beside the airport yeah. and jumped into it and goes, let's wait for the trolls to come out of the woodwork. And that's why it was so good because we caught it all on camera. So yet I was actually sitting there with the computer. Yeah. And I was, while they were live, this was all done live, so they were live trolling me, live writing about me, live saying, oh, this guy's a fucking dick, he's a fake, his, his, his jet's the size of a washing machine. This is what I came <laughs> out of the night, right? So I was sitting there listening to all this and I was sitting having a cocktail. With the feet up, with the flip flaps on, and this was all being video. So I was going, "Who's this coming up now?" And it was all being done live, so we could actually show in the documentary that it wasn't that I was caught out. So how the fuck was I going to say it was in that? <laughs> it, the whole fact of it was, we knew this was going to happen. We knew that people didn't want to see. You couldn't have had. You couldn't have known how big that was going to be. But I, I, to be honest, we had thrown busters one, two, and three was already set up before we yeah. done that. We knew. Right. I knew. Because I had seen hated privately coming my way. Yeah. People writing to me on Instagram, writing private messages, saying, I hope you die. I hope this. Like, crazy fucking bastards. Oh, Who, somebody got a somebody nail. Wrote somebody to said you. they got a nail in their fucking meal in the near day. All oh, this hocus pocus. People. Yeah, somebody had said to me, I hope you die. I hate you. Blah, blah, blah. This big. So I knew the amount of hatred that was out in this fucking country. I goes to myself, I know this will be massive. And I said, the only way you win is egotistic. Cash. Glasses raining outside in a jet, but the jet has to be small. You have to let them get the loopholes. If you were in a bigger jet, they might start going, the jet, I could barely get into the jet. I had to crawl into the jet. There's <laughs> a bigger fuel <laughs> tank in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all like that. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Well, uh, well, fucking cool, because it did. I, Sean isn't aware. So this is what me and Sean were discussing on the road out. I said to you that there was a fucking 
did he or didn't he? And, and then people were like posting up, like there was somebody. So I remember this. I can't remember. Somebody phoned the airport and yeah. done, done the testers and all. Like, so she phoned the airport and she. It was a girl that just goes, yeah. I have found this pitch. Like, I mean, it must have consumed her life. For, for, if it was consumed her life, for, she was phoning the airport to find out the distance from one airport to the <laughs> other airport, to Dublin airport, and then she was convinced that, you know where I was? I was in Shannon airport, right? right. Bar, where, 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 Shannon airport, or fuck, I can't even mind. But whatever airport she had said, it was a completely wrong airport. And she says, the airplane went up and I'd only done a fucking half a mile round. The plane never left the fucking ground. Did I have to crawl into the plane? I don't even know if the plane had any diesel in it. <laughs> I don't think mean? like that plane I would have left the earth. I think it was a Thai plane, right? But that's, they were that fucking obsessed with it. That's what I'm saying. We had Biko and Suter. We had these big people sitting, one of them sitting for nine hours. This was facts. From the, the, the time of his Instagram to the end of his Instagram, that whole day, a Saturday, he sat in his house for nine hours. I didn't know him from Adam. I don't know him. And he was fucking fascinated. Did Andy Malone. And then he done the whole spiel. He couldn't have went because that jet would only be able to do 4,000 mile. And 4,000 mile from the... He would have fucking crashed into the water. All these fuckers were that fucking obsessed with me over one picture with glasses on and a bag of cash. That's the generation we're living in. They come out from under the bridge. You started making a list of them. Well, we made a list of them. Ju- a juicy list now. That was only a fuck. We only made a list of maybe 20, 30. There was thousands. Thousands of them coming out. Thousands. There was actually people going on and deleting their comments. So when we were on the fucking doing the pictures of me on the plane, people, when we released Trollbusters, the comments went from something like 1,200 comments down to something like 923 <laughs> comments. They were shouting them. Says, they were actually going on and deleting the comments and I hope he didn't fucking read that one. Seen, seen that one. How, saying, how bad was the comments? Oh, I don't know. Fuck it. To be honest with you, I wasn't even... Pff, I don't think they're overly bad. Maybe even somebody saying, Bye's a dickhead. Bye's wearing sunglasses when it's raining. <laughs> you know, the like, silly comments. Not, no, not an overly bad. Not an overly bad. It wasn't. But a few went to town on you. A few, oh, fuck. A few went to town. It was a video once. It was the people that thought they were the hierarchy. The bigger names. The people that thought they could influence the people to turn against me. So people were turning around and going, The whole country hates Andy Malone. The whole, they were trying to get everybody to turn against me. But it was I was fucking saying, When you're playing the game... Every bastard that was going against you, as soon as you go into the limelight like the next week and they see the spin you're putting it, they all love you. They're your best mate. One of them was calling me a dickhead the week before, and the next time he's texting me, Well, Andy, I love you. <laughs> you get that? <laughs> it's as I said to people, it's just fucking make sure you get paid both weeks. Who gives a fuck? But they were all, that, that's the way the, the generation is. One week they're talking about yell, and the next week they're fucking saying you're their best mates. And that's across the board, but unfortunately, the generation at the minute, you know? It, we, we've always touched on this, so we won't go, but it's the kind of ability of talking shit. Like, you wouldn't walk up to someone's door and say, you're a dick, because you get punched in the mouth. Yeah, yeah. But but the only thing, the only thing that happened about it, our toolbusters wasn't meant to end. That's season fucking three. We were meant to have a season four, a season five, a season six. So we were going to carry on. But, but the bastards wouldn't come out from the rocks. <laughs> they all went back under the rocks and they were all crying and they were all afraid. They were afraid to write to me. So I would put stuff out like, Andy Malone, he's a 12 out of 10, the most handsome chap in Ireland, waiting for the fuckers to go and go, you love yourself, you're a dickhead. But they wouldn't come out under the rocks. You're trying to I prompt couldn't, we were trying to prompt them out the same way with the fucking suit, the sunglasses, bag of sterling cash. I kept trying and trying. My team was saying, how the fuck is nobody reacting to this? <laughs> because they knew that I would fucking annihilate them. And that's the same as I said. Once again, I keep bringing it back to the younger generation. If somebody in your fucking class is bullying you, it might be, as I said, the captain of the football team, the captain of the girls' netball team. This is where we wanted to make an example of influencers. Andy Malone should not be attacking influencers and going back at them for, for saying it to me because they have too big of an influence. No. It doesn't matter how many fucking following they have. It doesn't matter what name they have in school. If they're bullying, if they're trolling, you call them fucking out on it. You can't say, oh, he's a captain of the football team. He's too popular. I'm not telling my teacher that he's fucking bullying me or he's saying stuff about my family. No, you call the fucker out straight on. And that's what we were trying to show. We were trying to use the show to show the younger generation it can't be tolerated. And that was it. We, so made, that, we made it into a fun way of doing it. Well, that takes us into the troll busters, uh, Sean. Uh, once again, and to the people that's watching this, Andy then released a series of shows. They were well edited, well set up. You obviously had you had the plan, so you obviously think we knew what we were and doing. And you had people on tender hooks, and you had, <laughs> and you had people worried. <laughs> I had to delete some of my. No, I'm gonna do. It. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out the big birds. You know I, I, I could have probably said something like, "I'm the sort that would be like that's a dick or that there." Or I would have an opinion, right? Yes, I'm a very yes, opinionated yes. person, but I would never actually come round to writing. Cue this I bet you somebody's like He talked about me one time <laughs> But I would never I think it takes A 
fucking special type of fucktard to go and write about yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. that you do not know. Yeah, yeah. This is the best thing about it is they will be your best mate. Yeah, they see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They see you in the film station. They'll be like, "Well, Andy, you know, hoping you didn't know that they said this and and thing." Or it would be people that you might like be on your peripheral that you might know of, or you might have went to school where you haven't spoken to in a long time. All of a sudden, there's something to say about you. Well, as I said, the, the the thing about that is right. A lot of people are miserable in this day and age. They're miserable. They, they don't like their life. They don't, they don't like. Do we hug Sean? Don't they? We hug. Yeah. <laughs> we cross him. <laughs> so they're miserable at the minute, and what they want to do is try and t- take you with them. That's, that's the only plan But it's somebody writing up He's a dick They think that's going to ripple effect To somebody else And they're going to say Oh he is a dick That's the only thing The reason they're doing it It's not nobody feeling good You're right? in the game now Where you know And we know It doesn't matter what they say Let them keep saying exactly. it Exactly Because look, it just without, keeps without the ball them rolling saying it, it, Look as I said You have to make sure It's a 50-50 split Or 80-20 Right yeah. 80% love you 20% hate you Without that to and fro you're you're not getting big enough. You're not pushing the pace yeah, enough. Yeah. People don't like to see people being successful, and I don't know. People who agree with me and people don't. I've never seen the legs fit in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland seems to be that anyone that tries to do something different, they're a weirdo. They're a nutcase. I'm coming on motivated, getting up at three a.m. in the morning. That boy's lost the fucking marbles. He's getting up at three o'clock in the morning. Now this person's fucking lying in his fucking bed, fucking God knows what he's up to at eleven and fucking in the morning, doing fuck all of his life. But he thinks he can fucking ridicule me and come on and talk to me because I get up at 3 o'clock and go to the gym. It's, it's, it's the mindset these people are in. They're not in the motivated mindset. You You're know? saying that, hey. I have a vision of two people that you remind me of. <laughs> right? Two people. Don't we say that? Right? Right? The, the cross. Right? The cross. Right? Conor McGregor and Tom Smith. Yeah. <laughs> you are the love child. The love child of Conor McGregor. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck, he loves oh, you. Oh, only bad or not. Only bad or not. Handsome Stranger is on Trollbuster 4. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Trollbuster by the Handsome so, Stranger. <laughs> but you had, you had the nation in hand the hooks, and, and I say nation because there was a lot of fucking people involved in this. You got some rates, like, my many views was on that. Half day. a million in every one of them. Right? Right. Every Trollbuster got so, half a million. There was only one point. Five million people in in things. So we we ha, you had them there, and uh, you know what? The at the time I was like, this is marketing genius. It was funny. It was laughing, and you were calling the people out. And uh, the the message that you're saying now it makes more sense to me. Not at the time it didn't because I was just watching the drama of it uh, from the peripheral. I wouldn't get too involved, so I would have clicked on maybe after and seen it. And it wasn't one of these ones waiting to see. And it uh, I enjoyed it. But it it let's just say the message is very clear. The message yeah. is very clear, and it, it is a and message. The, the message was clear, and at the end of it, there was a good deed done. We give fifty thousand pound to Pips Open Support for mental health charity. So we wanted to show people how mentally ill, right? And this is a this isn't a judgment; it's a fact. Humans are the most de- fucking dangerous species on the planet. They're mentally ill at the minute. M- most humans, right? It's like somebody turning around and even saying, "I'm fucking going to go and smoke twenty cigarettes a day." They know they're killing themselves. Now, it's insanity work. If you turn around and go, I'm actually taking this and I know it's killing me. Is that not a form of insanity work, right? How many people's doing it? It doesn't mean because so many people's doing it, it's, it's, it's not insane. It's insanity work. So I knew if I could show people that the country at the moment in time was on its knees with mental health, and at the end of it, there was a good story. We give £50,000 to Pips Hope and Support, a mental health charity in my hometown. And most of the people that were ridiculing me, this is true, and this, I, I know this to be factual information, a lot of the people that were ridiculing me and writing stuff about me and saying stuff about me have used that funds. And that's a fact. Yeah. So instead of me going against these people, I helped them. So while they're sitting ridiculing me and calling me names, I'm donating £50,000 to a charity that's helped them people. So as I said, as long as you shine light, on the darkness, it, it it can it can help make a difference in the, in the world, you know. It did it did stir a wee bit of controversy too because there was you don't know this Sean, there was like a and it was uh, another one of, you, you were on a roll with the market and this is where we're going to go into this afterwards because you were flying high and you were there for a while and then all of a sudden we, we sort of didn't see you but yeah. we'll go back into it. we'll circle back but uh, there was a enter to win you followed Andy and you were in there you were in for a chance to win it. 50 grand am, am I right Yo, You're right You're right yeah. Yeah, yeah, And then uh, Which I like Because the fact was We're all like Is this Is this Bollocks gonna give someone 50 grand like, And I was like I'm fucking getting this too I'm still getting Fucking text messages <laughs> <from the back." laughs> And I was like yes, yes, I'm yes, in yes. this too Right So uh, Turn around And then He announced that It was for Pips But I have well, The first say, by one It was Randy Stallone 
So Randy Sloan won it. It was a bit of a hot and oh, a so, so you did. But it was joking. We put it up to keep the whole thing going. We done a picture of me with a fucking cowboy hat on with a big moustache. And we <laughs> said the 50 grand winner goes to Randy Stallone instead of Andy Malone. So I put this up to keep it. Because we knew the trolls were going to come out. You bastard. We knew you weren't giving the 50 grand to anyone, you miserable <laughs> fucker. Yeah. And it started the whole thing. And then the week later, we picked the, we picked the winner on the documentary. So we did. nobody knew who the winner was. But You, you got, had to buy the documentary to see who, who but won But you it. got fucking hate from that. Oh, uh, yeah, we could hear because, from, So yeah. then, actually, I was like, I, I was entered because I'm still getting fucking text messages from this. <laughs> <laughs> so I was entered and it was announced and I was like, oh, class, I want to think. But people generally were like, oh, you were going to give it to him at the start. No, why did you? And I was like, you fucking give 50 grand to Charlie. You know, and no, then no, no, did no, it not go is, round that you fucking didn't give them it? Exactly. So what the thing was, right, as I say to people is, if I went in and fucking rescued a woman from a boarding house, they would say, why did you not phone the fire brigade? You Sean. couldn't, Sean, the <laughs> handsome stranger. But the facts of it was, we had give 50 grand to fucking the mental health charity going through COVID when everybody was at an all time fucking low mentally. We knew we'd done the good deed. What the newspapers were doing in this country, in Northern Ireland, were phoning Pips Hope and Support to see was it fraud that Andy Malone didn't give the money to them and they wanted to do a story on it. So when Pips Hope and Support said, yeah, no, he did give 50 grand to us, it's putting, we put it up on our social media, giving them the check. Nobody wanted to do the story. Nobody I, wanted to do I, the story I, on the good fucking yeah. deed. This country wanted to do the story on the negative deed, Andy Malone, the fraudster, that didn't give the 50 grand. Yeah. And it was, it was the opposite. So, But that shows you, in a nutshell... The mentality. There. So uh, they phone up. There's a big juicy story here. He's fucked. He's, he's conned fucked, you Yeah, all. he's conned. And then, he didn't give 50 grand to nobody. Then yeah. they were like, no, he didn't give us a call out and we'll do a picture. And they're like, ah, oh, fuck God. Yeah. It shows you the mentality. It just shows you the way it is. But I, you know what? And then, but things, you, your head was bound to be spinning to. It was all over, and yeah, you, you had to obviously keep a presence on social media. And then the next thing is you done the trollbusters, and then you you were still you are going on, and the trollbuster stopped because you didn't have trolls left the bus. Couldn't get them out. There was no trolls left the bus. We yeah, and I, I I thought the message was strong enough. We had showed. I, I, I thought if, if you had, had carried that kept, on, if the trolls had kept coming out, it would have, the message wouldn't have been as strong. We stopped all the trolls in their tracks, and we we showed by only three episodes. One, two, three, and they all stop trolling. Same way as I keep bringing it back to the younger generation. If you stand up to them straight away, as they say in the Marines, if a fucking shark comes for you, attack it to head on. If you go, you run away from the shark, it's going to annihilate you. Mm. The same way with the bullies and the trolls. If you hit them head on, speak to somebody about it, speak to your teacher, your mother, your brother, your sister, all of a sudden you've brought light onto the darkness and they'll stop doing it. Now, I think the message was very clear. Yeah. They all stopped. We couldn't get them to come out. Even when I was saying, Andy Malone's a 12 out of 10, the fuckers weren't coming out and saying, big ego, you're this. They were just sitting there going, Andy Malone is a 12 out of 10. Because they were afraid <laughs> to fucking say any different. You get that? It's okay. like a well-known radio presenter here from home that uh, sued somebody high up and got a massive payout. Nobody writes about him anymore because nobody wants to be that person that's given the big pair. Exactly, yeah. And it, once you put a couple of, once you put a couple of heads on the spike at the gate, that's... Yeah, as I said, percent. if the snake comes, cut his head off. Like, right. if you, once you do that a couple of times, then it, the, the back off. And as I said, the message was there. If, as it was continuing going now, then the message wasn't there. So you, you were flying coming. then. The meals were flying. You were in all these shops. And then there was a notable presence of... I stepped, stepped off away. a bit, yeah. I had kind of stepped off the Ampex meal side of the company. I was more focusing on different projects, more of like a, um, programs. Like uh, we have a program there called Rewire Your Mind with Andy Malone. I was focusing on it. We were doing a lot of videos for it. Then I had realised that I, I'd say for about 13 months I stepped off the meal. So we're just tickling away because what happened with the Ampex brand was the Andy Malone and the brand name outgrew the company. So the, the Andy Malone and Ampex brand grew so fucking fast and so quick, it was very hard to get the foundations correct. It was very hard to go, for going through that growth phase. It was so hard to, uh, at one stage we were doing fucking 28,000 meals a week and you we were going from 2,000 to 4,000 to 16,000 to 20,000 and the foundations weren't correct and especially when I stepped off. It. So I kind of stepped off the company. I was going, fucking, I'm, this is maybe the wrong thing to say, but I was saying, I'm more than just a meal prep owner. I'm a motivational talker. I want to inspire inspire people. It wasn't more like I was coming on and going, I can change lives by people losing weight. Then I realised my gift could change people's lives by getting inside their mindset. As I was telling you earlier on, the wee girl six weeks ago, whose mother had reached out to me and said that the wee girl had slit her wrist. She was getting bullied and she was tired to kill herself. 
But I was her inspiration and she watches me every morning before she goes to school or she wouldn't get out of bed. And I phoned the wee girl at a talk where she was crying on the phone. It was emotional for me as well. I was talking to her on the phone and I still give her a call once a week and speak to her and her mummy. But the mummy was saying to me that she, like, I have saved that wee girl's life. So I know that my purpose and my passion in life is my face. If I was if only put on planet Earth to help that wee girl and save that wee girl. So I was had that mindset for maybe 13 months and it was pulling me away from the males. I was going every hour, I'm focusing on the meals. I'm not focusing on my God-given purpose and my divine purpose, what I have to. So I kind of do nothing, then the meals started dipping. The sales weren't there, I, I didn't have the love for it. There were sabotage going on in-house, I'm sure what I told you about, there were sabotage going on in-house, there was people planting stuff, there was a lot going on, this is facts, like this is well, this well, is all being documented well, by the police. Well, well let's, let's delve into that, but I, before I want to delve into that, I'm going to say to you, and I'm... I'm not to come across harsh, but there's a contradiction there sometimes of what what you were saying back then to now. But I'm sure that's lesson learned that you would have been like, you can't take your eye off the wall. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, you're responsible for a hundred percent. And as I say, there's one finger pointing at everybody else and three back at me. Oh, yeah. And as I hold my hands up, that and I'm saying for 13 months of I took my I did take my eye off the ball, but at the time. I didn't believe it was because I thought I was doing it for my higher purpose. I thought, I'm taking my eye off. You had brought a team in around you. Yes. And you obviously thought, right, I'm, I'm now putting I, the foundations. I, I, what, I, what I thought was, time. yeah, so what I was thinking is, right, production manager, supervisor, marketing manager, sales manager, bring all them people in. Then it allows me to step off it. But yeah. I but did believe, I had a mentor at the time, he was saying, your attentionality should be 10% on the meals, 10% on property, 10, and he was breaking it all down for me. So I thought, given the 10% of the meals would let me go and grow yeah. other projects and do this, but very fucking quickly, I realised that the eye was off the ball. And when people know the eye's off the fucking ball, people play up, right? Now, it did take me a long time to admit it and feel it and, and realise it. You know, at the time, you don't... Re- Sometimes, if the money's coming in, you're not really worried about the money going out. And so, it's a mis- um, in business, it's a big fucking mistake and a learning lesson for me. Didn't The money going out, you weren't watching it. You were just caring about, get that check in, get that 50 grand in, get that fucking loan, do the... And you didn't care because the bank was sitting good. So all these wee five grand payments, this payment, you weren't really worried about it. Once again, it's a learning curve. As I said, up until four years ago, I only had to worry about myself in business. Yeah. So I've learned a, a lot of fucking hard lessons. And as I said, it was practice what you preach. Take your eye off the ball, you're in trouble. And that's what fucking happened. So the sabotage? Yes. You had a team of ones in. Did yeah, we, we, we had a t- team of ones in and they, they were in on sabotage in-house. And it, to be honest with you, it nearly cost me the company. You know, this has even been down, what, remember? To what, to what degree? What were they at? To what degree? One of them was that they had got chicken, got out of the chicken and planted it. This is the day before he left. This was a manager and contacted environmental health. Now, we were lucky. We were able to prove it. We were able to show it. Environmental health have done a full... This is why I can speak openly about it. I wouldn't be able to speak openly. Environmental health have it all. So somebody went away yeah. and got out of the chicken. Yes. And brought plant, it into your... Brought, brought it in, planted it and stole all our hospital folders. So in the food industry... Once again, it's not something I'm up to date with. It's the production manager would have had. We had HACCP folders. They stole all our HACCP folders. Took, took all them. Now, this was environmental health only. Put it this way. We were lucky enough that they were able to prove who had done it. We were, they were able to check the times, the time the person was on the phone, the time he resigned, the time he left the company, the, the time the phone call was made to them. The phone call was actually made the day that he left the company. So this guy was like, I'm out and I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to fucking call. He actually... I had to take people with him as well. So we, we got a lot of staff and says, Andy Malone, this company's going to be closing. Will you come and work for me? Will you do this? And he tried to... He could have pursued charges. That's an industrial espionage. Yeah, it's, it's, 100%. It's, yeah. Uh, we had to make a decision. So this, it's all been documented, but we had to make a decision. What you give attention to will grow. If you keep giving it attention, you're going to take your eye of the ball again. So yeah. we had to focus on the positive side cut of it. it. Cut it out. Cut, just cut it, cut it and cut it quick and turn around and go, hold on a second. Are you really going to get anything? Was he on his own? It? No, he? there was other people involved in it as well. As, look, as I said... Sometimes if the leader's playing up, it filters down through people and they can say things like, hey, we were able to get into a WhatsApp group and I was holding a management meeting and after the management meeting, I write a turn around and goes to the manager. Your fucking boy's not at the races. You need to fucking get him at the races. He's making me... So he would then go on to the WhatsApp group when he left the management meeting and say, Andy was saying this and Andy was saying that. Now, if you have a right-hand man beside you and you have somebody beside you... They're in a group. A group, a group chat on WhatsApp. We were able to get into the group chat and that's how we were able to get... get the the fucking out. Malone yeah. Ranger out. Yeah, Malone, Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Malone Ranger's over. <laughs> <laughs> the game changer's done. <laughs> the brilliant, fucking... Brilliant, this brilliant, is brilliant. The, the, the fall group. 
the but fall, anyway, the fall group, and they were all in on it. But I can get it if there's one bad egg in amongst people, they can filter that energy through. It's cancer. It's cancer, and that's it spreads like fucking wildfire. So there's only one. There's a call coming. Yeah. So did you get rid of them? Gone. Cut and cut quick. That was right. my motto. Cut and cut quick. I took my Pfizer's in. They all had the same paperwork to state that they agreed to leave that day, or else we would put it on their on their files. What had happened, and we just cut them out and got them out with immediate effect. Look, as I said, if you keep the cancer, on cancer the in any longer. You're in trouble. Was Annie on the take? In what sense? Robin. What's that? Robin. Robin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was money robbed and all. Yes, there was a lot of stuff happened. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. But well, fuck Andy too. The, that the yeah, now, that, that's another thing too. As I said, one finger pointing at everybody else. If you leave your business open, yep. for people doing that, right? So what I've learned now, right? I would be an awful fucker for trusting people. I would turn around and say, "Trust him. He's a nice guy." I made bad business moves by taking on people without a three-step process interview. Where I made a turn around and goes. I say, no, you but he used to play football for fucking Jimmy, Jimmy United FC. Yeah. Give him a fucking shout. He'd be, he'd be good. He'd yeah. be brilliant. And I, that, because that was my lack of managerial skills. Yeah. So I would have took people in and realistically, you were setting yourself up. Well, this is a realisation now. A realisation. Oh, no, now yeah. it's a different ball game. It's three-step process. First of the few seconds. So you're looking around and you're blaming everybody else. But it's really, and it is their fault. But, but it's still, it's same it's same the same yeah, so it, therefore, it, Mostly, as I say to people, is if you want to blame everybody else, I said, you're playing the fucking bluffing game. It's always back on the owner of the company. Okay, so as I said, one finger pointing at everyone else, three at me. It was my fault. If I hadn't took the eye of the ball, if I hadn't done the correct step by step process in the interview process, you would have people in with the skills and knowledge. You wouldn't be bringing in people and trying to make them into something that they're not or that they, they don't want to be. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like at the start I had, it was all family and friends. I had my best mate was the production manager. Our fella, he was the fucking logistics manager. He couldn't get from work to my mom's house without getting lost. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> and he was the logistics man. manager. Because you used to be trying to build a team around you using your fucking, you were using your heart. And, and you, you want to help people too. You wanted to help people, but at the end of the day, sometimes when you bring people in and... Business, it, 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 the head and the heart thing. don't blame No, it. and I've learned that, so I've realised the first mistake was all family and friends. The second mistake was not knowing, and this is where I had to hold my hands up, not knowing how to do the correct interview process. I didn't know how to do it, but like to think you knew everything at that stage. It was ego. Oh, I take that boy on. I'll turn him into a fucking gladiator, and then no, no more gladiator, right? But that was my mistakes. Now I've learned, and they're, they're all dear lessons. But it, it's made me who I am today. Well, it is an evolving process. Business is an evolving process, uh, uh, exactly. And it, uh, you, you either learn and grow, or you just fucking die in it. And exactly. That, that that's the, the only thing. So you, you've realised you made a balls here, and yeah, and, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Cut them all out, and then what? Where are you at now? We're sitting in a good position now, so we've recently signed, only in the last 24 hours, a big contact for the UK for 2,000 retail stores. We signed eight weeks ago a uh, contact for BWG in the south for 1,000 retail stores and online's back pumping. But as I said before, what you give attention to will grow. What you take attention off will die. People can see I'm back and forth. It's fucking clear as day to see. I'm banging it out on social media every day. Stuck in podcasts. <laughs> Stuck in podcasts. <laughs> with a burn, the hot stranger. <laughs> oh. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant, brilliant. But that's it. You know, it, look, people people can see. As you said there now, when I came in, you said, I just disappeared for maybe a year and I wasn't really doing that. That's when you're taking the attention off it. People see it. And it has an effect on if you're running the company and you're not giving it attention, our company's strengths was always the marketing and sales. And I was a face behind it. Now when I'm back on it, it starts to boom again and it's starting to go again. And it's like, as I said, it's what you give attention to it grows. But you're still focused on your motivation. That, that's motivation that's my purpose. That's yeah. my purpose in life. So I'm going over to America now. And there's a bit of business being done in April where I can get over and we're finishing off releasing now a program, Rewire Your Mind with Andy Malone program. It's all about mindset and how you have to hit the reset button. And anything you've learned to date is only your perspective of it. And it takes you through a step-by-step process which is a recipe for success with your mindset. So a lot of people, as I said before, whether it's money, it's material things, you see some man fucking driving in a in a rolly or driving in a, a fucking range or whatever driving, and he's depressed. What's the point in even having the fucking, spending the money on the car doing it? This teaches you how to go inside, to feel good first, and then all the other things will come automatically. You know, it's 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 a um, a program that I've been working on for about two and a half to three years, and that's why why my attention was going on other things, and I thought it was okay because it was for the greater purpose, it was for a bigger purpose than getting somebody out of curry to make them lose two pounds. I was thinking this is what this is my life and this is my God given gift. As I said, the wee girl that was going to commit suicide only she started listening to my face again. That is the signs I believe from the God saying, look. 
that's your purpose, that's your gift, and that's where your attention must go. But I've made a pact for the next six months, apart from April going to America, that I'm going to give my undivided attention to arm packs, to put it on the map again. And to be honest with you, four or five months ago, it was probably ready for closing. And all of a sudden, with 2,000 retail stores in the UK, BWG in the south of Ireland, online's fucking happening. Once again, I've had a vision. I've put it in paper, the step-by-step process, every quarter, every three months, and we're on target. The, the contract that we, we've we got over the line in the last 24 hours, I already seen that contract. I didn't know how it was coming. I have a vision board. I don't know if you've seen it up on the thing. 2,000 retail stores in the UK. I put it up on 1st of January, and I get the phone call there now from one of our sales reps and things saying, fucking, it's good to go. It's, it's, it's a done deal. So even that in itself will show how far the brand, the brands went from being in 20 shops <laughs> because we took the attention off it to all of a sudden going to 2,000 to 3,000 in a three to four month time frame. So for the next six months, I'm going to give it everything I have. I'm going to take in the team, people that are more knowledgeable of me with, with recruiting staff, the crack recruitment team. And the next six months, we're going to do a rebuild. And then I will, once the everything steady, the ship's fucking back sailing correct, then I can go and focus on my purpose and my dream and what I really want to do because I would have regretted it. If I had a went and pushed on with that and turned around and goes, I should say everybody else's fucking fault. I'm packed as fucking, it's, it's over, it's done. It's an, an easy route out. It's an easy man's game out. I invested 300,000 of my own money into the company to steady the ship. I had to do that to steady the ship. So I put 300,000 pound in. And once again, it was a case of scenario of playing all in. Yeah, they're going to fucking burn the boats here, fire the money in, and stick at it, and, and make it a massive success. Climb the unclimbable mountain. That's what I'm doing at the minute. Climb the unclimbable mountain. Everyone was going against me. People didn't want to see it a success. And this is what my program's about. About not being denied. To keep going at all costs. Doesn't matter. Well, how big the mountain is. Fuck it, it was one big fucking hell of a mountain. Hey? And I've kept going, and I've kept going. Now we're near the top of the mountain. But this time when I get to the top of the mountain, it's about continuing to keep going. It's not about going down a slippery slope and going, yeah, we've made it. We're on all these shops. It's about turning around and going, what did I learn from the last time? Wrong team, wrong processes, wrong ma- wrong manager, which was me at the time, wrong, and turn around and going, right, every mistake that we've done, we've learned from it, and this is when we can th- go through our growth phase now, and we can put the Ampex meals on the map while I go now and do what I tried to do without having the crack processes in non packs meals, you know? It's a... And I think in business too, uh, anything like that, especially anything I've ever tried to do, it's a, it's an ever-evolving process. Yeah. Like, it, it, even as you say there, if in two years' time you look back and you are absolutely... Not if, when, in two years' time you look back and you're absolutely flying, and you look back at that, you're like, that had to happen. Had to. Had to be to. there. Yeah. Because if it kept, if it kept, well, let's put it this way, if it kept paddling its own boat for a while and it was just doing okay and doing okay, you'd have left it doing okay for the next two years. Exactly. Well, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the, the adversity was what really made it when the haters were coming out, when the people were hoping you were closing, that adversity was, like, I, it's, it's, it lights a fire in my belly. People think that they're ridiculing you. If people write stuff about you or saying stuff about you, people go, oh, that's an awful thing to say. He must be feeling terrible. I'm saying, come fucking up, man. Come at me, let's go. And I love it. I use it as fire. And if you can use every negative situation in your life as fire to learn and to grow, as I said earlier on, I prefer, I respect the man that gets up every day and goes at it like a steam train. If he fails 10 times and he keeps going, as I said, it's better than the person that doesn't enter the arena and he sits and ridicules everybody on social media and looks at your failures. That I wouldn't want to be that man. So it doesn't matter how many times I fail, it's about keeping going. This is what my programme shows you. Whether you failed in business, whether you failed in relationship, whether you failed, you believe you failed in life, it's just about getting yourself up and dusting yourself off and going at it again. The funny, the, the key thing that we see, and we've had quite a few successful people on here now, and the key thing that I see across all of them is that absolute determination, but never deterred by the negativity. But it's the mistakes you make. You, if you don't make the mistakes, you, can't, mean, you can't learn. You can't, learn you can't grow. I would, you can't dwell either. I would say this now. Only for the mistakes that happened, I would not have grew and be the person that I am. And I don't believe that the universe and the gods wanted me to release my program until they put me through hell. I don't believe, I think the man's all this motivation, he's all this talk. And don't get me wrong, did I go through it first when I was younger with football and all this? Yes, but it really tested me. It put me through 
a fucking storm, a hurricane, and goes, big man's coming on telling everyone he's fucking bulletproof. Let's test the fucker. And by fuck they tested me. They put me in the middle of a hurricane, and they goes, let's see, can you get out alive? And I barely just get out alive. I had seen one time I worked 72 hours back to back straight, no fucking sleeping, worked straight to steady the ship, and I knew this is a tester to me. This is turning around and going, let's see if you fucking want it. But it's reignited you. Yeah, three, yeah it, it's let the fire back in my belly. Yeah, I'm sort of fucked by some fucking energy's coming out of my hair here. But I'm not monsters. <laughs> it's a good that's job it. that's not where I rely on my energy. <laughs> I'll be fucked then. The <laughs> <laughs> burn will be over. I'm a way off for you, fuckers, the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> but you get me, it needs something like that to make you hungry for it again. And sometimes it, it's adversity that, you no, know, in fact, it is adversity that makes you. Anyone that's, it's, it's, look, everyone can perform. When things are going good, everyone can do it. But when things are going bad, that tests the warrior. That's where the lions come out to play, and you turn around and go, My sheep are in my land. Am I going to rise up or am I going to crumble? And I chose to rise up, and there's nobody can take it away from me. I've, I've chosen to push forward and continue to grow no matter what happened. And it's it's worked, thanks be to God. The, the mindset that you're talking about, it had you done, you'd have you done programs or have you been? We, we've had ones on from different. We've had Tom on, we had Brian on from Dynamite, with Tom from Dream Mentor. And, and did you do any? Did you do 10x or did you? No, I've done none of them. I have my own. I tell you, I tell you a story. Believe it or believe it not, right? I was maybe two years in down Pax Meals and I was going through a bit of a hard time. I was out of a relationship, maybe a year and a half, two years into it, and I never read. I didn't believe in spirituality. What I believe in now, I didn't believe in. And I was sitting on the beach in one point, sitting on the beach, and I was reading the power now. I was on the very first fucking page of it. And a dog came over and started licking my leg. And I said, get out of fuck, get away. And a man came over to me and he says, Andy. And he says, that's right. And he says, my two wee girls love you, they follow you every day and fucking social media and Snapchat, blah, 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 blah. And he says, do you mind if I sit down beside you? He says, yeah, go on ahead. He sat down and he told me, this is true, Bill. Believe it or believe it not, that he was an angel put in my path. Right now, I was fucking about to drown the bastard. He says, what the fuck's it? You know, I didn't believe in this stuff. He said, this boy's fucking warped. He said he was an angel put in my path and I was about to make a mistake. I was going to sign a contract to sell the Ampex company, right? And it was ready to go. It was ready to be sold. It was a big company in Dublin. It was ready to be done. And this was, believe it or believe it not, three weeks before COVID. Nobody knew COVID was coming. And the man sat down and me and him went into a time trip for four hours. And I was on the first page of the porn now and it states, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. Now this man just appeared, right? And he said, telling me, he sat down, we talked for four hours fucking straight. And he taught me about spirituality, about the real world, about life. And from that day, I meditate every day. I read books. You've probably seen me. I read The Secret. I read The Porn. And I didn't believe in any of this hocus pocus. He told me every night, you must walk for an hour. You must train. And he helped show me. Now, me and him went and locked ourselves, right? Believe it or believe it not, for three months in the Moran Country Hotel. The Moran Country Hotel in the room upstairs in it, the conference room. And we actually took my sister in as a writer. She's a PE teacher in the area. And we took her in as a writer. And we wrote two books. And it was everything about, from the stories I've told you today about it first with football, till walking on Bondi Beach, till how I changed my life. And he came in. Now, this was nothing but the um, energy coming from the universe. And I spoke spoke this for, this for three months. We wrote it, and we have two books done. And one of them's called Enough is Enough, The Rise Part 1. And the second one's called What's It All About, Part 2. Now, both of them are a seven-step process to your mindset. And how I have used from step one to seven to change my mindset and that's that's the story that happened but telling that story i haven't really told too many people that story because if you told somebody that story it's a the fucking base lost the plot well i'm trying to, i'm trying to catch where reality and, and thing here because and i'm not saying that but yeah, smart yeah. this guy come to you and said that came you, to me yeah you, uh, 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 so me. is this guy a uh, 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 was this a gay? And I don't mean that being smart. I mean, yes, yes. is this a real person? Is this yeah, 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 yeah. He was an angel sent in your path. This it, is what it, he told well, me. Did you me. just think you're a cocky fucker? No, no. When he sat down with me, I was going through a hard time. So, so this you is somebody you know? Yes, some, yeah, somebody I know. Oh, all right. Through okay. operator, big, big. No, I didn't know him at the time. Okay. But he is a businessman. And he would be in the Sorry, because he I didn't me. know whoever. No. I was this, lost this there, is, right? I didn't know him at right. that time. But he's a businessman from just outside New York. Yeah. And he's in the... I didn't believe in meditation. I thought people that fucking done yoga and meditation were fucking loop to loop. I thought, what the fuck's that there? I mean, that's that's madness. He taught me all about meditation, about the spiritual world, 
and he taught me about my mindset. Now, up until that time, I wouldn't have a strong mindset. So I was out partying, which I don't do anymore. I don't drink. I do. I was partying, fucking drinking. Had a weak mindset. But this man came into my life at that time. And as I said, it was the first time I ever went to read a book, ever. And it was a power now, page one. You couldn't, as I said, you couldn't write this. And he came in and he wrote me the two books. I'll actually give you the books when we're done this here. Mm -hmm. The first book, we done it over Boxing Day two years ago. And it turned £82,000. It was a ebook. And it was £27.77. That's what the book's about. Since I met that man, 777 follows me everywhere. Every time I get into the car, I see it in the fucking number. If I go into the shop, buy a can of Monster, they give me the change back £7.77. And it follows me everywhere. And they believe that's the divine guidance from the spiritual world. Now, we have wrote them books, part one, part two, and then I went to COVID camp. And that's when we went through the shit. So I am now in the, in the middle of with somebody else writing part three, four, five, six, and seven. And there's actually somebody from America helped me do it. They've read part one, two. Is that what you're taking to America? That's what I'm taking to America, yeah. So that, that program will be released in the next two to three months. But I believe that the universe, right, while COVID came, didn't want me to complete it because I was probably going to go to the wrong process because I hadn't went through what I went through in the last two years. So my now part three is completely different than I would have wrote part three. So I believe in the, I believe in the universe and divine guidance. That's what I believe in now. I didn't believe in any of this until I met this man. But this now is now my time to go and now preach from part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven. So there's two. I must send you on the two yeah, uh, yeah. after this here. Let's read it. There's big stuff coming up. Well, Andy, I, uh, I I have to give it to you now when you come on. And the one thing that we've, the common thing we've had with people coming on is there's an energy. About anyone that's wanting to be successful or drive or ambition, whether they're wrong or whether people are sitting there going, fuck. All three of them are talking absolutely. Yeah, normal. yeah, yeah. Thing. It's the but same way somebody probably say, man's warped. Somebody, an angel came in his path on the beach. I don't tell that story. I haven't told that story before, but believe it or believe it or not, usually the first people to hear that story. An exclusive for the bird An exclusive for the fucking bird <laughs> and the, the handsome stranger. <laughs> but you know why? Because, Along because, with because you know the, what it's the Malone Ranger. <laughs> <the game changer. laughs> but you know what it is? It's a, a wee bit warped, right? Because yeah. if you tell people this that don't understand the spiritual world, like the time turn around to somebody. Well, we were talking about this last week. If, if people are different steps of their awareness, and what they're ready to Ex listen exactly. to. Exactly. If you'd have told me that story, even now, I'm it's not where you are. Yeah. But if you'd have told me that a couple of years ago, I'd have been, he's mad. What the fuck? Yeah, he's yeah. taking drugs. He's, uh, he's out of his nut, right? But the, that's what I'm saying. So you have to be very careful with who you share your stories with, right? If you're sharing, if I'm coming out and shouting that story out every day, people say, fucking well, Bond's lost the fucking plot. But when you're telling that story, now there's a lot more people getting into the spiritual world. If you look at fucking people, cold water treatment, meditation, yoga, it's a fucking whole thing now. Now, you would have had maybe 2%, 2% of the universe fucking yeah. doing it. Now it's 98%. Yeah. It's, it, it, so everything evolves and everything is evolving. I think we're coming to higher, higher beings now. But it's only so many people that are willing to listen till it and actually take it in and go, but that's that might have happened. Because some people think you're just born. And you die. And that's what people believe yeah. it. And until I, I came into the spiritual world, I also believed that. I believed you were born and you die. And I have a completely different outlook on life. And I'll not go into too much here now, but that's the, I, I look at life completely different. And that's because I was evolving as a person. And usually it's when you're going through your hard times. And when you're going through the adversity that these people, call, call them angels, call them humans that were sent to you. Like you turn around and we go... The reason I'm on this podcast is the signal has been put out somewhere yeah. and it comes back and we're sitting on the podcast now and I'm telling my story, right? Yeah. That's a fact. There's, yeah. no, there's no way. If you know about the law of attraction, the law of attraction will doesn't know if it's good or bad. If I yeah. turn around and go, fuck, I'm going to be late for that fucking show tonight. You're guaranteed to be fucking late. You've put it out and the universe is going to put a bus in front of you crashing the road. You ever say, I knew it was going to be late. That fucking bus held the road up. It's the same as anything. What you put out there, you're going to get fucking back. Your yeah. mindset. That's it. And, I, I and even, even mindset. you're saying that about your mindset, writing down your goals. Yeah. And you you saying that, look, you knew that you were going to be where you're it, at. It was a done deal. Before it was even... It was a know, done deal. On paper. And I also knew... Wait, this is where my awareness comes into play. I also should have knew that the Ampex meals would have took a downward slope. Because this was my words, okay? I'm more than the meal prep. I'm more than Ampex meals. I can't get the right staff. These, this, this, like, it's, they're not there. COVID has destroyed people, right? Now, when you're putting that out, the universe listens to all good and all bad. He's not the meal prep. He, he's more than meal prep. That's okay. If you believe that, mate, we will fucking grant you your wish. As I said, fucking the genie, the Aladdin. Ask, 
What's the Bible say? Ask, no, believe, oh, ask, believe, receive. I asked. And I did believe that I was more than a meal prep owner and the meals weren't me and blah, blah, blah. And I received. Now I'm back going, I am. I am not even alone if I'm packs meals. Now I'm much more. I am much more. But why not have it all? Why not have it fucking and all? Why turn around and go, well, I can't be a meal prep owner and a motivational talker. Of course you can. You can have everything that you want in this life. But I didn't have that mind. I was thinking, it's, I thought it was taken away from me as a Andy Malone. I had to say, right, folks, buy your chicken curry there and give you a special offer, three ninety nine. I, I, <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was taken away from me as a motivation because all I wanted to do was come on and say, folks, change your fucking mindset. This is what you need to do. So he was going, right. When I was waking up in the morning, he was going, this is actually taken away from Andy Malone. That I'm coming on from. Oh, I'm, I'm a motivator. I can't. Time. I can't deal with you talking about yourself in the third person. Every day we die. I'm like, fuck me. No, the, 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 the old you. Yeah. There's always two. You, you, you and you have to look back like that because you have to be grown. You have to be because that person's not me anymore. Yeah. I'm not that man anymore. I'm not the person that can't. I'm the person now that believes you can have everything you want. Yeah. And the ego. My ego was probably. Oh, some fuckers calling me the chicken curry king. I'm not talking about the curry anymore. Now, everybody has that thing in their head, and I was yeah. going. If I come on and talk about that, somebody's going to go, so he's just a uh, fucking curry seller. All he does is sell curry. And I used to look at it that way and go, I'm not talking about the meals anymore. Fuck that. And then people's going, man, never talked about meals for a year. And that was because of the mindset. But they take the ego out of it. When, when the, you take your ego out of it, you, of course I fucking sell meals. If it's making money, as they say, the people that's doing the fucking tarmac out there don't have a passion for tarmac. You absolutely own what your bread needs buttered. And you know what it is exactly. And and, and like you, you ever hear the Muhammad Ali interview? And he says, "If I had empty things, I'd have been the best." Yeah, the manager. best at it. Yeah, you know, you gotta own that. And and like that, that's hey, you you're not getting to go and talk in America without the meal company going right. You're exactly. not getting the support exactly. your children, your lifestyle, yeah. the thing. So if you're not buttering your bread and you don't appreciate that, and you got a new grinding, and you can hear that, and you you got grounded. Yeah, go and, completely grounded. Life will grind any if you think you're too good for something. Exactly. You'll and see when the, the ego starts taking over, all of a sudden the universe can do you in a three sixty five spin. It can take you the whole way back and go, now come, come up to, now let's take you up through the ranks in a different frame of mind. And you know it, it uh, it's funny that you say about putting things out because it was only last week and it was actually your wife was we were sitting talking and she goes to me one day, whatever it was we were doing, and I was talking about chaos. I always seen myself in a I would see a car and I was like, at some point I'd have that noise. She turned around and she goes to me one day, and I don't know what one it was, and she drove by and she goes to me, You looked at that and you had 50p in your pocket, and we were walking at <laughs> our bar, and you goes, And I have one of them one day, and she goes, Absolute conviction in your mind. She goes, It wasn't even how am I going to get it? What way am I going to get it? It was already done. How am I going to pay for it? It was a done day. You just yeah. said I would have that, and I did buy that model of a, of a car, but it was funny that it, it was it was the actual, as you said, that was wrote down, that was there. I, it was I, a done deal. You see, if it's already done, right? If you put no no doubt to, the, right? So a lot of people turn around and go, oh, I'm going to fucking open up a, a, a new a mindset business, or I'm going to become a doctor. I'm gonna, and then they put it out there, and they do everything to go against it. They won't get up early. They won't do anything. It's all right saying you put it out there with confection and it comes back. You put it out there with confection and then you work and you keep grinding at it. It's guaranteed to come through. A lot of people also believe that you can put it out there with your mindset and will, will also become a um, manifest in the life. A lot of people do believe that. I'm probably not at that level anyway at, at the minute. And I believe you do have to work hard to get what you want, you know, and, and I, plus you appreciate it better I, when you I, do do it. I'm that. in a, uh, on another way. I'm with you. I'm like, people can go and say, look, I'm going to become the fucking next astronaut. The you fucking know. president. But the only <laughs> thing is, if you put something that you do believe and you put it there, it's easier to get there. Aye, but you because still have to work at it. It's uh, not just uh, put it no, out no, there and aye. it'll come to you. Yeah. But, but what I do but is... John, uh, it's not like I'm going to win the lottery. No, what I'm saying is if you put out a clear goal that you know is within your reach, yeah. but if you push yourself, it becomes easier because you're more focused exactly. on what, what you What I do there. every day, when I get up at five to three every day, I look at my vision board and I say, are the decisions that I'm going to make today going to take me closer to them goals or take me further away from them. There's an incident last fucking week, one of the boys for me, he says, are you going out for a fucking nick of pints? And I says, fuck, I'd love a load of fucking pints. And I says, but I ain't fucking in that off some more. I fucking have to do a bit of a Zoom calls to do in America. And I says, oh, fuck it, if I'm out for a fucking nick of pints, it wouldn't be too bad tomorrow. Now I'm talking about rewiring your fucking mind and I knew that I had to be all in. And when I'm talking to these guys, if they don't feel the energy to the screen, they're going to say, 
are we playing all in this by but he's not the real deal he's full of shit so I had to look at my vision board and go I want to go over and speak with Les Brown, motivational talker. I want to go over to America and grow my grow the Andy Malone brand for what my purpose is. If I go out tonight, I'm going against my goals in this fucking board. Right? Now a lot of people say, fucking catch yourself on your fun head. Go out and have a fucking few swills with the bays. Go out and have a few pints. But that's how dedicated I am. I'm going every single day. Is my decisions taking me closer to them goals or further away? And if it is further away, I have to cut it and cut it quick. I won't make that mistake. Now, before I want it now, if the vision board wasn't there, you very fucking easily forget about what goals you're chasing. So my it's habit that when I wake up in the morning, I study my vision board every day for five minutes. It's right at the side of the bed, and as soon as I open my eyes, the lamp goes on, and I study it for five minutes, and that subconsciously tells me every decision you're making today. It might be you got a fucking phone call and something went wrong, and the fucking fact, and you had to go over there, and you had you had to put a fire out. You're turning around and going. It has to be done because we have targets to meet. And if I'm turning around and telling people without it happening, I'm going to be all over the UK. Ampex Brown's going to be in the UK. But how the fuck can I go home when there's something wrong? You know, you have to go that, give it that extra two, three, four hours. So when I have that on my fucking board, I believe the universe moved things out of the way to get me the contact in the UK. I do believe that because I put it up, but they're saying this fucking boy is keeping the faith and he's grinding and grinding. I don't know. First, you don't know how you, you don't have to know how you're going to get there. You just have to put it out there and the universe will guide you. The how will come. And people don't believe in that. So people are to go, fucking UK. So how can Andy Moon get in the UK? She's fucking from Ireland. There's, I don't see anybody else. And I'm going, hold on. I don't need anybody else to be over there. I've put it on my fucking board. I believe it's going to happen. And the correct calls come at the correct time. And that's what, what has happened here. So the how, people, a lot of people give up because they can't see the how. How can I get there? I should count with two children. Should I cut? No, no. Put it there, and the universe will work with you. It won't work against that. Every day, I truly believe, as I say to the universe, the universe is working with me, not against me. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't see it sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes something might go against you, or something might, but that's still the universe working with you. You might lose a fucking member of staff who you thought was fantastic, or something might happen. But no, the universe is always working with you, whether you can see it, see it or not. Yeah. In depth. We're there. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Honestly, <laughs> good, I am. Good, 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 good. Hundred percent, I'm with you on it. it. It's funny because you know I, I love that mentality. Yeah, so do all we talked about it. Yeah. It's it's funny because me and Sean have grown up together, and we obviously from we were two and three years of age, and it's been the last while we've been coming on that journey that we're more aware of things. We're ready to, and we're put. We've been putting it out to you because we put we put we started the podcast, and I named the group. I changed the group to the number one podcast show. Literally yes, changed yes, yes, the yes. name of it to yeah, the yeah. number one podcast show. Because I have no doubt in my mind, I've said to people about us thinking, I was like, we have the best studio set up in yeah, the yeah. whole of Ireland. And the new one there's fantastic and by Fair Play is what's going on. Uh, like, brilliant, yeah. fantastic I lads. don't give a fuck what anyone says. You can show me whatever I want. Yeah, yeah. There's no better setup. Exactly. And we're finding our fate and we are going to make this the number one podcast. Brilliant. brilliant. But it isn't... It, that's and you must have that man. You must have but that perspective. You have if but you don't have that perspective, right? How like the likes of the fucking top caliber, like Ronaldo, McGregor, a um, Tiger Woods. How every one of them believed that they were going to be the best in the world at their game. It's like me. I truly believe that I will be the best motivational speaker ever. I believe for for the last couple of years I've been doing what you were saying there, and I used to put up on the thing Ireland's number one motivational talker. If you look at my Instagram, I have motivational speaker. And I used to keep putting that out there. And I do believe, and this is not being egotistic, a lot of people say, oh, fuck up, Andy, you're full of shit. I do believe that I am, when it comes to the motivational game, on the talking, that there's nobody can match me in Ireland at the minute. And that's what I truly 100% believe. But I believe it's like, if you were an NBA, want to be an NBA basketballer, but you're born in Ireland, and you want to stay in Ireland, and you want to reach the, 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 the top level at basketball, you can't stay in Ireland. You must go and learn where the best are. And... That's what I, I, I know I have to do. I know I have to now f- spread my wings, fly to America, learn from the fucking top people at the top of the game because they know a lot more than me at this moment in time. And that's sometimes that's a bit of ego. You have to turn around and go, there's a lot of people out there that have done a lot harder training than me in that game. And that's where I was getting pulled to and fro with the Ampex meals. If I'm focusing 10 hours a day on Ampex meals, I'm losing 10 hours a day on my divine purpose. But as I said, it's done the 365 spin around now where I know, look, it's cash flow. It's that that can help me with put it this way. As one of my mentors said, Andy, 
getting into the UK to 2,000 retail stores, what does that do for your motivational talking? Your face is going to be in every retail store. Fucking the new Uncle Ben. <laughs> 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 the new Uncle Ben. I don't even know the new Uncle Ben. <laughs> but you get that. You get that. We're going that to get a wee bottle of the same. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's, 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 that's an all good joke of me. What advice. The new Uncle Ben. But that, for brand awareness, straight away, there might be somebody going, oh, he's just fucking by here, fucking, on, on the front of a meal. And they check you out, and then you can sell to them. You can turn around and sell your motivational speaking. And it's not about the selling part of it. Look, don't get me wrong. Everybody, anyone that says they're not out to make kinds of liar. We all want to make money because mo- money isn't evil. Whether I believe it's evil or not, money's good because you can use it then to inspire. Like the 50 grand I give to Pips Hope and Support. That came of hard work. That's not evil. People might want to say it's fucking uh, drug money, it's laundering, all this hocus fucking pocus. But it's good money. You're using it to do good. And it's the same now I know now. If I can generate enough money through Ampex Meals and for brand awareness of my face, by default, by default, I don't care what anyone says, you become one of the most recognised faces in the UK. If every retail store has your face on it, without people realising that subconsciously they're going to see you, and then the universe, you can do good. You can, that person watches you and you might turn around and t- teach them something about their mindset. And it's not being egotistic, it's for the greater good. It's not that I want people to notice my face for fame on the front of a, a chicken curry. But you love it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I suppose it's you know my lad on. I would be joking. I would be joking. But, no, but again, you know what I'm saying. It's, for, it's saying for the that. greater. It's for the greater good and the greater purpose. Where I'm turning around and going, I don't believe that it was. It was a, like at the start, it was AMPT. It was a wee fucking muscle man in the front of the meals with the arms up. Like that. I believe that the universe had. And a then did you change it to you? We changed it. To, uh, <laughs> it a, yeah, exactly. We changed it to me. You fucking. We changed it to me going in the front of it, but that was a. Uh, Half at the time, half the marketing team, and most of the marketing team saying, I think it's a bad move. You know, if you want to sell the brand, if you want to do something on it, it's a bad move. Like when I was going to sell the company at one stage, did me tied in a four year contract that I had to market for the company, that I had to promote for the company, and it was because I am the company. Yeah. Like, you know, I am Andy Malone is the, is the brand, and it can have pros and can have cons. If Andy Malone does something wrong, I am packs meals, can go wrong. But the way we seen it was, at that time, I didn't really re- know why I was going in the front of the meals, but I can tell now that the universe had had a plan for me. And by getting me in the front of that, it was part of my divine purpose. Is speaking, helping younger people, teaching people how to change their mindset to live a better life. And it's been all part of the journey. And that's why I haven't given up on Ampex Meals. Yeah. And that's why I kept on at it, because as much as Ampex Meals is completely separate to the Andy Malone and the motivational talking, it's very much a part of it now. It's very much a part of it yeah. where if I can get my face recognised enough, not just to spend the money to go into the shop and buy a healthy meal, I can have an effect on them people. If they go home and check me out, they'll go, holy fuck, that man connected with me through a screen. And that's what it's all about. It's about a connection through a screen. And that's where we can change people's lives. It's a funny, it's a very direct similarity in some of the stuff you're saying and with what we were doing. And I know I said you, number one podcast, but that wasn't... For me and Sean and, and Aidan when we were discussing things, that wasn't the, the goal. That was a byproduct of our goal. Yeah. And we said to you and they said to you and I said, we, we, we've sat and people think you're full of shit when you say it like this because I genuinely, genuinely, a hand on my heart and I ain't, I ain't wavering from this. Mm. I said to Sean, if we have good crack and we are bringing good content that might change how somebody yeah. thinks, just for that moment, might help somebody that's in a hole for just that moment. Exactly. Might make somebody smile when they're having the worst Boston day. It it it's something positive. Yeah. And and there, you, there's a lot of people will go through their entire life that it, will and, not get and to that, do that. That's exactly. I was speaking to a um the Napoleon Hill right. I was speaking to a girl for two hours last night. The uh, vice president of their coaching right. I was speaking to her last night for two and a half hours on the phone. Now, I was working from three yesterday morning, and I got home I'd say about eight o'clock, and I said, "Fuck." There's nothing worse I can think about going on now to try and bring energy through a screen. So the first thing I don't want to get on the, on the phone tell her, I said, to let you know my energy levels are low. I've been working from 3 a.m. today very quickly. Very quickly when I was speaking to this woman, I knew she was far more advanced than me. Far more advanced about the human mind, right? And I was sitting in awe, right? I mean in awe, thinking, holy fuck. It was a, we had this connection through a screen and it was we were at a very, very high level, right, of energy going through a screen. All of a sudden, the energy that I didn't have, I took her energy. Yeah. This is I took her energy through the screen, and I fucking goosebumps even talking about it. I was flat on my, I was fucked, and I was dreading going on. 
But she was able to talk to me through that screen and give me an energy. Now, I've, I've never, ever, this is through you, ever experienced that because I believe I'm the one giving the energy out. Yeah. And I've never experienced that. You know what I knew straight away? That these people that I'm talking to in America, these people, not only, the right n- yeah, not only am I learning from them, but they're, they're giving me a service. I was able to come off, and I mean buzzing when I come off that fucking phone call, I said, holy fuck, what a call. I've never had a call like it. But that's the people at the top of their game in America, and that's what I'm learning from. The things I learned on a phone call last night that I, that I can't learn here. And it's with no disrespect to anyone, and this is me not trying to be, think I'm most certainly not better than anyone. I believe we're all, we're all the same, but some people just work harder. But the level of mindset in this country is very hard for me to learn unless you're talking to the likes of these people. And it clarified that again last night when I was speaking to this. This is the vice president of the coaching, right, for Napoleon Hill. But amazing. Amazing, and that's what what I know. What I'm doing to people, so people get up in the morning, they're not feeling good, they're down in the dumps, they don't want to get out of bed. And like that wee girl that I speak to now once a week, when I speak to her, she goes into school in good form. She's not feeling bad, and that's the first time it ever happened to me. And I think it was the gods trying to say to me, "That's what you're doing on a daily basis. You're giving that energy at three o'clock in the morning." Now some days I get up, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a fucking warrior every day. Some days I get up and. The wee soft spot in the pillow, the, the big blanket's hugging me. And I'm saying, I don't want to get up. But then I remember the wee girl that tried to slice her wrist getting bullied. Then I remember the person that contacted me to say they were going to drown themselves when they see my video. And I go, what if they're waiting to watch me today? Get out of bed, you lazy bastard. You. And then I jump out of bed and I keep going. And that's how I know. So people say, he's a fucking nutcase. Getting up at three every day. I don't want to always do it. But for the, the higher purpose, it's in my head now. What if that somebody did kill themselves, or what? If, and I could have been the one to save it. So it's near accountability. They're doing. They're holding me accountable nearly. Where I know I have to fucking do it. I have to get up at that time. So people say to me, "How do you all stay motivated?" I'm not always motivated. Most certainly not. But I'm disciplined, and I do the things I don't want to do, and that's the key to success. I don't always want to get up at three a.m. I don't always want to fucking eat good. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I don't eat good, right? But that's a conscious decision. I don't always want to train. I train every day. No days off. No days off. And I don't always want to do it. But I know what value it brings. So a lot of people don't, don't train because they don't believe it brings value. Value. If I didn't fucking train, I believe that I would feel... I don't believe in depression. But I believe you can feel depressed. So if I didn't train, I believe that I would feel depressed. That's a fact. Because I'm not releasing my tension. I'm not getting my endorphins going. So it's like, if you see well, this... It's one of the number one things that they will prescribe to you. You know, yeah, or medication. It's, it's training, training. Or walking or doing. But I never also would have seen the value in meditation. Right? So people don't know how I can go from 3 a.m. to 10 p.m. at energy all the time. I can't. I can't. But I know how to master it. So after eight hours, I step away. And I meditate for 30 minutes. And the only way you can describe it is plugging in your phone, right? When it's dead and the battery starts going. That's what meditation is. Now, I didn't believe in none of this stuff, but I know it works. And then I go again. So I do a half time every day, no, no days off, of I get up and I train for an hour and a half. And then at the halfway point of that day, I meditate for 30 minutes. And that meditation takes my bodies back up. And then you go at it and once again, it's about awareness and finding out what works for you and what the value brings. It might be somebody that only walks for an hour. And that could change their whole life. You might have somebody coming home, they're grumpy bastard and coming home to the wife and, oh, fuck her and blah, blah, blah. If they walked before they go home to the house, that could change their whole fucking life. They could come home and great for them, saying they're sitting down and enjoying the dinner. So people have to actually see the value. It's not training. I don't train to train. I train to be better. I don't meditate to meditate. I meditate to be better. And everything that I'm doing is bringing value to my life. And that's what people have to look at it as. It's not a matter of just going in and grinding out the training session. It's how are you going to become the best and finest version of yourself. And that's what everybody has to look at. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, Andy, there is no doubt in your energy because you've been fucking buzzing. <laughs> 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 if, if a few things will take. It's from just this my is passion, boys. This is this no, is this is my this is. I can see it. This is what I know. I've been putting planet Earth to do, and if it's just to help once again, if one person listens to something I'm saying now, and they go and go, I'm gonna train, or I'm gonna read a book, or I'm gonna believe in what Andy Malone said. That's maybe the only reason the podcast happened. Mm-hmm. One person could have their life saved, and uh, that I, look. I'm sure you can see it's my God-given gift. This is my gift is talking and motivating and making people see things and getting them. 
It's not off night meet people that can talk more than me before. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on a more serious note, and uh, when we're rounding up the show, I want to dedicate the show to my wife's best friend that passed away this week. It's been a hard week. Um, Amory, you're an absolute legend, and uh, thanks for all the memories. Brilliant, thanks. <laughs>